Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Dan Dusing, and I'm coming to you today from DD Studios once again for another tutorial. Now for this one, we're going to be working in Premiere Pro CS 5.5. There is CS 6 out right now, but we're just going to use this. It should work for CS 6 as well. And we're going to be covering today how to import and export DSLR footage within Premiere Pro CS 5.5 or CS 6 the later versions pretty much. First off you want to go to new project and select where you want to save your project. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Premiere at all. We're just going to call this tutorial. You can name your project right there. But um, this is not really an intro video to Premiere. I can do one of those if you guys are interested to see that as well. But I'm really just showing you how to import and export uh, DSLR footage. So along these you'll see many options and right here you see digital SLR. So that's DSLR and they have 1080p, 720p or 480. 480 is not HD so you typically will not work with that. 1080 you have um, 24 frames per second, 25 and 30. 30 is more common for uh, TV and internet so we'll go with that. But just so you know there is a 720 and you can do 60 frames per second along with 24 but 60 actually allows you to do slow motion and I'm actually going to do a tutorial on that in a couple weeks so make sure you subscribe to see when that comes out first now we'll just go with uh, 1080p 30 frames per second now the important part though when importing this is um, to go to settings and go to 44 or 100 hertz rather than the default 48 uh, because I don't know about you guys if you've run into this problem with DSLR footage or any other footage when it's at 48 my voice or anyone's voice in the shot is actually a lot deeper and it's really weird it's not how it's supposed to be 44 100 corrects that so that's what I use I'm not saying it's the best setting but that just what's that just is what works for me uh, you can name your sequence but I'm just gonna leave it sequence out one and that's the only thing you need to change within here everything else is fine um, you can customize your frame rate but what you want you don't want exactly 30 you want 29.97 because that's what your footage is gonna be and if you do end up making a mistake and making this project the wrong frame rate because your video is a different frame rate you can always just go to new sequence and that will make another sequence within your project and you can just make it the different um, setting under DSLR so right now, go ahead and import. You can import by double clicking this or going to File Import. And I have a folder on my desktop tutorial with a test clip in it of me staring at the camera awkwardly. So that's good for you guys to look at. And bring it to the timeline, clicking and dragging. Uh, like I said, I'm not really gonna cover a lot of the basics of Premiere right now because this is really just for DSLR. Um, I am covering some of the step-by-step -step beginning steps, so a beginner's course, but uh, anyways, moving on. So basically, as you see, there's no errors here. There's no black bars on the sides or above. You are ready to edit. Uh, this is all good to go. You can edit now, and you can cut it up however you want to, edit it. I don't know what you would do with your footage, bring in multiple clips. You want to make sure that all your clips though are 29.97 frames per second. Uh, you can bring clips in that aren't, but they're going to have some weird things happen to them. Uh, slow down, speed up, depending on how you shot them. A lot of different variables. You want to keep your frame rate for your clips the same as your sequence right here. Your sequence is 29.97. Your clips should be 29.97. So once you're done, make sure in Premiere that this playhead right here, this gray one, is not extended out here because of uh, say how much footage you had it brought it out there and then when you actually end up editing it it's like that make sure you bring this in and align it right there uh, just so that's all that you're exporting so once you have your footage that's a good snapshot right there once you have all your footage set and you're ready to export um, you want to make sure that I mean, I'm not sure if this affects it, I just don't select anything in here, don't select just one clip in here, make sure everything's deselected, save the project, and then you want to go to export, media, 
This is how to export for YouTube. You can do it for DVDs and different uh, different formats, but this is going to be for YouTube. So preset right here. It's going to depend on what you chose. You want to do either 24 frames per second, 25, 29, 97, depending on what you chose. There are some 720 options right here. So since we chose 29.97 for our clip and our sequence, that's what we will export as. So choose the HDTV 1080p 29.97 high quality. Now once you do that, you're all set. You can scroll down in here. You'll see your frame rate. Make sure you don't accidentally scroll or anything and change that. You want that just like that. Don't change any options here except for the maximum bit rate. Now you can see that this is going to be 39 megabytes, which is not a lot, but for this clip, um, for this short clip, it sort of is. And if you have longer clips, you're going to see that it is. So let me extend this so you can see how much. This is four minutes of me just sitting there and doing random stuff. So that's four minutes. And when we export this as 1080, now HD does take up a lot of room. But if you're just exporting it for the internet, it's at 40 maximum of a bitrate. It's almost a gigabyte in size. So you want to take this maximum maximum bitrate and bring it in. I actually use around 15, and that just cut it in half. You can do 13. I've never gone below 12. Uh, this basically just lowers um, the bitrate, which lowers how big the file is. Um, in layman's terms pretty much and doing that will not really affect your quality it does to a certain extent but there's no reason for YouTube why you should have it all the way out to 40 uh, so if you do want to increase it though back if you just move the maximum back it's not going to do anything so you actually have to do the target to bring it back just so you guys know these are little details but just so you guys know to answer any of your questions. Once you're all set, preview all the settings right here and it all looks good. So then you can go ahead and hit export and now your sequence will export. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer you right away. Like this video, add it to your favorites and subscribe for new tutorials every Monday and new skits and other parody videos and stuff like that every Friday. Thanks and have a great day.